Hey, Life Groups. Welcome to the Fall Life Group Session, the first one. So here's, here's a reality. Everybody likes a good quote. Everybody. Everybody likes to put it on Instagram, Facebook, your choice. But here's a good quote. There are no accidental saints. Say that with me. There are no accidental saints. I think it's true. So here, here's something you may not, when you find out about me, some of you may not like about me. I actually enjoy exercise. I like fitness. Uh, and I look back on my life in my younger years, I used to get under some seriously heavy weight. Believe it or not, I used to be able to get under well over 500 pounds on the squat bar. Can't do that now, it would crush me. However, I didn't, here's the reality, I didn't just walk into the gym and immediately get under that kind of weight. It took years of consistency of going to the gym, of, of, of doing, the, doing the workouts, of the nutrition, uh, sometimes even orienting my day around my training sessions. Uh, that's, a, that's life pass, but it was reality. It was a, it was a lifestyle choice. It was, there was no accidental 500 pound squats. In the same way, practicing the way of Jesus takes a reordering, a reformation, if you will, of our lives. And that takes a number of things. It takes grace, lots of grace, the presence of the Holy Spirit. It takes effort on our part, not for salvation, but for formation. Any relationship takes effort, we know that. And connection or community, what we call holy friendship. This is just a reminder as we start that the purpose of life groups is to, to practice the way of Jesus together through holy friendship. And of course, this ultimately looks like loving God and loving people. Now, a bigger question we continue to ask is, what does that look like in daily life with real people and real situations in real society? Because isn't that the entire point? And it looks like this. The way of Jesus looks like connection, compassion, consistency, and courage. We'll keep coming back to that. So for this fall for Life Groups, we're using uh, John Mark Comer's book, Practicing the Way. Uh, if you don't have your copy, you can get it. You can get a PDF copy from... Uh, from your leader until you're able to buy the, the actual book. And we're going to, it's a deep dive of look at being a disciple of Jesus. And when you read it, Comer, if you have, if you have read it, you, you saw this, Comer starts his book out with a very, very thought-provoking statement. Literally, it's the first thing he writes. Who are you following? Everybody is following somebody, or at least something. Put a, another way, we're all disciples. The question isn't, am I, am I a disciple? It's who or what am I a disciple of? And I would add some S's there. We're following some bodies or some things. Our ultimate goal is to follow the one. So when you read the, the book, Comer really likes an, uh, an author named Dallas Willard. I consider Dallas Willard one of my mentors from afar. I was actually in a room with him at one point, but we were not, I didn't know him. But I feel like I did through his writing. And uh, Comer quotes uh, Willard in, in his book, from the great omission, he says this, and just think about, this will be in your, in your questions to chew on, the greatest issue facing the world today with all its heartbreaking needs is whether those who are identified as Christians will become disciples, students, apprentices, practitioners of Jesus Christ, steadily learning from him how to live the life of the kingdom of the heavens into every corner of human existence. It's a powerful quote when you step back and look at it. Um, and really at the heart of it is we're always being formed. We're always being shaped. This is spiritual formation because everything is, everyone is in the process of being spiritually formed. Just like everybody is following somebody, everybody is being formed by someone or something. As followers of Jesus, we are being shaped into the image of Christ Jesus for the benefit of others. That's what Christian formation is. Comer is intentionally here. If you read the book, and it may rub some of y'all the wrong way, to be honest, but uh, you will not see him talk about being Christian very much in the book. And he's intentionally not using the word Christian because the word Christian has become so diluted that it really doesn't mean what it's supposed to mean. Christian's not the only word that's done that. That's just part of language. 
When you read through scripture, you'll notice there's only three references to Christian. And really what it means is little Christ. And it was first, uh, it was first uh, uh, spoken toward the Christians uh, in Corinth uh, in Acts 11, uh, 11.26. I'm sorry, Antioch in 1126, and they were called Christians, little Christ, and it was derogatory. But here's the thing, it caught on. It caught on in the early church and they embraced that title because it meant something. For evidence, as evidence, Peter says in his first letter, 1 Peter 4, 16, but it is in no shame to suffer for being Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by his name. Pretty powerful verse. See, to be a Christian meant something powerful, to practice the way of Jesus together in real time with real people, and for them within a culture that many times hated their guts. Now, fast forward today, to call oneself Christian could mean a lot of things. You're a member of a church, you have certain cognitive beliefs about theology. I mean, look, we're, we're in Mississippi. I'm born and raised in the South in Mississippi. Uh, if you grow up in the South, Christianity is in the water. For many people, it's not, are you a Christian? It's, where do you go to church? Regardless of behavior, it's, I'm a Christian. And for a lot of people, it's, I'm American, therefore, I'm a Christian. But for some people, if you're a committed follower, for some people, Christian means you're a committed follower of Jesus who is seeking to live out the way of Jesus in everyday life. And that's what we want. So in another way of looking at it, Christianity has become something we do in a long list of activities that demand our time and attention. And for this reason, this is the reason Comer uh, talks about being a disciple or an apprentice of Jesus. So an illustration that I found very helpful when it comes to spiritual formation and discipleship is it actually comes from developmental psychology. Uh, it is the will illustration. I will share it with you and hope that it makes sense to you. So take this old bicycle wheel of mine that needs some air. Uh, and the wheel is the, the core of our identity, the core of our self. It's like the center of the wheel. And the spokes are, they connect us to all the exteriors that people experience about ourselves and different roles and relationships that we that we have in our lives, those activities in our lives. So everything like family, job, money, even time management, social life, habits, uh, online presence, recreation, even things like ethnic and racial identity, uh, sexual identity, gender identity, all the things that people experience about us, but they're not core of who we are. And when something else other than Christ Jesus is forming us, these began to be malformed. This is where the issue of Christian formation and discipleship comes in. See, Christian formation is forming, it's Jesus, the Holy Spirit, forming that center core of us to be Christ-like. And discipleship is practicing the way of Jesus in our everyday lives. And so when we don't focus on these, we focus on these. We focus on the, the core formation that impacts how we practice and learn to practice the way of Jesus. So I hope that's helpful to you. So the question is, who are you following and who are you becoming? What is forming you? That's the burning question. It's one that we will never be too young or too old or too far gone to explore and to answer. See, Jesus' formation is the process of being formed into the image of Jesus Christ for the sake of others. I want to close with this because Chris, Scripture gives us a picture of this. Not only with Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, but Jesus himself also gives us powerful stories that illustrate what the way of Jesus looks like in everyday life with everyday people. Most notably, the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15. This is a parable that we will keep coming back to this fall. It is a parable about the path that we take and the goal of spiritual formation and discipleship. The goal of apprenticing with Jesus. The goal is to reflect the character and actions of the Father in the parable, which were the actions of Jesus himself with the people in everyday situations around him. That, that was what Jesus was doing as he was connecting with the people around him. 
As I read the parable, it's the idea that uh, I am the younger son, I am the elder son, and I'm on my way to becoming like the father in the parable or like Jesus himself. And we're going to keep coming back to that as we explore uh, this idea of for, uh, spiritual formation and discipleship in John Mark Comer's book. You know, I'm not capable of the physical feats that I used to be able to do in my 20s, but by the grace of Jesus, I can become like him and do what he did a little bit more every day. I can, and you can, reflect his character, Jesus' compassion, connection, consistency, and courage with real people in real time and real situations. You know, there really are no accidental saints, and Jesus invites us, come, follow me. That's his invitation. You know, the Bible presents this as if it is possible to live like Christ. And I believe by God's grace and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that it is possible. So I'm looking forward to the fall. Hope you have a great uh, life group meeting now. Thank you.